now. I know most of you, so you've already heard what I'm going to say, maybe. Um, okay, I just want to say that I like Bernadette's work, always been, uh, and I'm a little bit prejudiced in what I'm saying, right? Um, what I do like about her is that she is a um, self-taught artist, and that she has been very successful in fighting people who are of the academic persuasion. Um, that is pretty close to my heart because I'm totally unacademic myself, and I like that. I like when somebody who who does something out of their own desire and pursues it and succeeds can do it. Because who the hell ever asked Picasso if he had a PhD? I do not think so. So, uh, in other words, it's who is to judge her by often outdated rules and standards, which happens a lot to people even if they have a PhD. So it's a wonderful feeling to be totally free of all these shackles, and she, it actually leaves her free to do whatever the hell she wants to do as she's doing it, which is impressive, particularly in a place where uh, that was not always taken for granted. Now, uh, last year, I think it was last year, right, uh, Bernadette, being unacademic, uh, battled 300 people, and she won very good prizes from the Royal Einster, was it the Royal um, Academy? Yes, and uh, she held her own very well, and I'm very pleased for her. Uh, it will also give tremendous hope to other people who do not go the academic route and just go ahead and get stuck into the work. So I'm impressed by that. Um, now, as far as I gather, all the girls here that look at us uh, with expressions that are uh, indefinable, I mean, they, uh, you know, they are basically representing <coughs> what she felt and went through in her own life as a young girl. And, um, uh, and all the memories she had, and uh, the memories you have before you become a full-blown woman, whenever that is, I don't really remember, <laughs> it seems so long ago. Uh, but uh, I assure you I am still, and I'm also still that little girl. Um, what counts for them at this moment in time that they portrayed here is actually, you know, the things that we take for granted, but uh, it's very, very, you're very conscious of these sensations, uh, smells of the meadows, you know, when somebody goes and mows the grass, etc. You feel that much more than when you get older, when you're stuck into a full-time job. Uh, they discover things, they dream. I always dreamt, well anyhow, I was very vain even as a young girl. And I can spend a lot of time looking in the mirror and I always uh, you know, tested all kinds of makeup as most <coughs> girls did for hours on end. And I always thought, oh, I want to be a neat girl for girl. Uh, I was about 14, I think of that scene several of her films, and that appealed to me. I wanted to be that, while looking like that. Uh, so anyhow, uh, it turns out, because my <coughs> dreams uh, became very real, and I happened to work with Great Agamo for a whole year in New York City, which was sort of a power of whatever, whatever you call it. Okay. Um, these, these uh, children you see here, which are sort of on the cusp of, of something else and they don't know it, and they have this look about them where they don't know what to expect of life. We know what, by now, most of us know what it is, but they have this wonderful innocence that, that uh, is so endearing and so touching and unfortunately also very tempting to people like Donald Trump. <laughs> well, you have to say that because actually there is a very wicked world out there for these young girls and not only for the girls because uh, I'm also a great champion for men 
also for the young boys. And uh, they are always in danger to lose that which they have now, which is so beautiful, very quickly, you know? So we need to protect them. Uh, let's see. Uh, the girls here that you see here that are a reflection of somebody standing right here, maybe in many ways, and maybe on all of us, um, they, they grow up and they trust. And the trust is not always warranted. And uh, it makes you feel very protective of, of them, all of them. And the ones that you see here, it's only what we see right now. But when we look around, when I look around all of you, uh, regardless what age you are now, I see you as a little girl or a little boy still. And I find that very, uh, that you must not forget that, that all of us are just an older version of who we were. And uh, looking in the faces of these girls uh, that Bernadette chose to paint, you feel a tremendous sense of wanting to keep them at the state they are right now. But you know only too well that it is not possible. Fathers fear for their daughters, and I'm not surprised because they know themselves and they know other men and that may not be a PC a statement to make and that probably will be taken to task by various authorities but I don't care because that is the truth uh, and it's probably like that with women as well who fancy young boys and I would like you to look at each face in this room and, uh, and see and look for, for the child in, in you um, uh, yeah, and uh, I haven't got much more to say about it, only that I like her work and that I like to see it develop further and I like to bring it maybe possibly to a place like Germany, uh, which hasn't seen any of the work, even <coughs> we have shown in Belgium, right? But possibly not this kind of work, a completely different kind of thing. Um, I think the directness with which she is painting these uh, is very endearing and quite rare nowadays because it's, it hasn't got the self-consciousness about it to want to oblige whatever the rules are. And so I like that, Bernadette, in your work very much. And I think uh, <coughs> too little uh, of that nowadays because uh, she doesn't <coughs> follow the the, uh, the rules and the guidelines. So there you are, and welcome to all of you, and I'm very happy you all came, and thank you very much. Thank you. thank you for coming, and do buy something if you can, because the price is right, and Christmas is near. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. It's just a big thank you for coming. Um, yes, uh, it is scary being here because you're kind of saying, well, A, what if no one turns up? And then B, what if people do turn up and they're standing looking like you want to talk? Um, but, and I suppose as an artist as well, it's, it can be scary. You know, you're in your studio and you're working away, and then to put it out in the public domain, whatever, put it out on social media or the website, you're still kind of protected. Um, but when you put it out onto the walls, it's a different experience. But it's that experience then that brings you on to your next one and your next one. So while it's scary and everything, um, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad that people get to see the work um, because it makes me even more made motivated when I go back to the studio um, in me knowing that what I'm doing is right um, for me. Um, and yeah, and everyone just keeps asking what the answer is for the answer. Is the fact that, as Anya has said, that. Um, we're all this child within us, even though we might be, you know, whatever ages we all are, lovely ages. Um, but that inside we still have this kid that likes to slurp the end of the milkshake, you know, even if it's not right to do in public. And, um, and that sometimes we can forget about that and forget about having fun. And um, the child is vulnerable, but yet actually have this innate strength. And sometimes that strength can be like as if having a big pair of antlers on your head 
and sometimes you don't realise you have it yourself, but other people see the strength in you, like as if you're going around these big, huge things. So that's where the strength comes in, and that's where the answers come in. So um, I explained a little bit. So thanks again for coming, and enjoy, and um, watch this next space. <laughs> Thank you.